Let's hope yeah. this one is as epic. Let's get it on. Out of the middle. has to do that tonight he can't afford i know that he loves to just rally get the ball back and loves running from side to side but against berrettini he definitely needs to be more aggressive more assertive and to pull that trigger when he has the opportunity totally because we know berrettini's got one of the biggest forehands and if he starts to dictate you're going to be in trouble It's the shot in the last match that had its ups and downs, the forehand of Monfils. And I think the way he's going to have to manage that shot is going to be important, Flip. Good start. Dr. Rashid courtside. In all your years Let's working with Monfils, Rog, was the forehand something that you addressed? Because I feel sometimes he overplays, doesn't get the balance right. Hey, look, it can, it can do, but you've got, to, you've got to remember you've got an imagination. And you, you know, you've got a person with a big imagination, so you've got to let him feel it as well. So Gail's a feel player, so uh, it's more important about what type of shot he was going to play. Like, was it a what percentage was it so if it was big it was good percentage and he missed it i don't mind that at least he had some purpose with the ball my big thing was to get gail to be in close to the baseline within about a meter for meter and forward on top of the baseline and be offensive and use his foot speed to cut the court off and hold the court you talk about berrettini's big forehand don't worry down the other end there is explosive power out of that racket when he wants it and not on just on the forehand side, but on the backhand side. His Mateo change of pace is, uh, on the ball, Gail, is exceptional, especially when you're on the court with him live. Let's see how Berrettini's first service game unfolds. Oh, oh that's nifty. There's the creative side of goal. A, movement, athleticism, and the ability with his hands. There's been a couple of players that have changed sponsors at the start of the season. Berrettini is one of them. You can see not wearing a, a traditional tennis company's clothing. to be the boss this evening. 13, of course, the man on the other side of the court as well has uh, switched not only clothing companies, but uh, also the racket, the same company that makes his clothes, or Tango, is customising the racket for him after having a, a long relationship with his previous sponsor. Again, not a traditional tennis clothing company. Berrettini's slice backhand mark, it's, it's, it's aggressive and it stays so low, it's, it's a beautiful shot, so 
Gale will be able to get there. It's just what he'll do with the next ball coming towards him. opening game for both players. Well, give us a, an idea of what it's like when you're One facing somebody who has quite quite extremities on their ground strikes. I mean, the slice is, it's an ankle biter, but then when Berrettini is hitting a forehand, that thing is coming at you so aggressively with so much spin. Yeah, I, I think, I think Berrettini's got one of the best chips on the men's tour. Um, it's kind of old school, turns the shoulders exactly how you should, and then it stays low and it bites through the court. And it's a beautiful mix up to that four end of his. And he can rip that backhand as well. He can step in and rip that backhand. He's got weapons on both sides. But when you play a guy with weapons like that, you need to not let him dictate the rally. Because when he starts dictating and he starts bullying you around the court, man, it's going to be. It's going to be a long night. If there's one person that can run around, it's the guy on the other end right now. It's more fierce, but you don't want to be doing that consistently for the whole match. So it's just important, especially to focus on your serve. Hold serve and then try and take some risks. You know, that's the only thing you can do, take some risks. But when someone is hitting the ball that big and they're on, There's something, you know, there's not much you can do. What I love about his forehand, it's not a huge take back. He just it's turns his shoulders and the racket drops low. He's just got so much racket head speed, but I'm, I just can't believe how it's just a very simple take back. And what he does do, extremely well, is he flights it and it bites off the court. Not only acceleration. Big part of the game here tonight was his service. The first serve uh, oh, when, when he does find his rhythm, and this is a beautiful night for him to find that rhythm, he gets access to a lot of off post balls and can dictate and be offensive. if it ends up being a long one. You want comfortable service holes. That's what we've had in the opening three games. James Kjothevon is the champ for this one, one of the best in the business. Actually, do quite a lot of work with his sister. Ann, who's a tennis pundit, commentator these days back in the UK. Lovely tennis family. And so we look around the grounds here at Melbourne Park as the sun sets on day nine of the 2022 Australian Open. And she's looking splendid in all her glory. The beautiful landscape gardens, the new paving. And of course, this arena, the centerpiece of it, named after the legend that is Rocket. Well, that's uh, just a, a driver two iron for me to get to the CBD. It might just be a driver and wedge for flip. But that's what's so beautiful about this whole city. It's one of the great sporting cities of the world, if not the greatest. In proximity to the cricket ground just across the road, there's the man that this wonderful stadium is named after. Of course, you've got the, the former Olympic Stadium where the 56 Olympics was held just across the road. Ridiculous that gets completely out of order. 
It's standard, Robbie. <laughs> Might be ridiculous to you, Nick Felt, but this is standard for the Frenchman. He tracks these down for breakfast. But what about his ability there to produce a shot at the end of range, right? here and let's talk athletics because these two athletes quite interesting both of them good strong quads underneath those shorts but have a look at the bottom half of their legs thin no calf muscles to be seen virtually <laughs> it's quite extraordinary yeah he's selling i still got you telling me i still got a chance roger no you don't oh, <laughs> You can just hear that famous line. Gee, gee. I think it's dumb and dumber, isn't it? Yeah. So you're telling me there's a chance? Yes, <laughs> you're telling me there's a chance. I'm always honest. No, sorry. This guy's got a steely resolve. Yeah, and, you know, his first week at the ATP Cup, I went and watched him, you know, I watched practice, practice on day one, and uh, he was just... He enjoyed the speed of the court, getting value for money, getting through the court. You get reward for clean, strong ball striking. zero batsman he just turned the shoulders so simple and so beautiful to watch mm -hmm. one thing with Berrettini 14, mm -hmm. I mean th th that he does not panic you know, he's playing against someone who moves as good as anyone we've ever seen on this tennis court. And he goes about his business, still playing within himself. I'll serve at 218. Game. Copy and paste from the previous point. Uh, it's, it's a great serve, isn't it? Talk us through Two it here, Flip. Up. You know, to abbreviate, it's a shorter, shorter take up, but nice ball toss, a little bit of a thing behind his head and nice body weight into it. Look at that, using, extending completely and using his height nicely and um, finishing in the court. That upper body was so upright. It's great, isn't it? He's not on, falling over. On contact, yep. yep. Keeping his chin up on contact. He had one of the biggest serves in the game, and, I, and I'm always curious. Love the you know, did you think about the technique much? Was it taught to you well early on? And how much of it is repetition, and how much is just natural? For me, I, I had a very Love simple the rhythm. You know, I had good time. I did have good time, but it was just a simple rhythm. I gave myself all the possibility to, to have a good serve, but I served from 14 to 17 every day after training. serve for an hour every single day as hard as I could for that one hour and that's just hundreds you know thousands of hours it's and it, it is repetition I mean I feel like I've got a simple serve but it was worked on every single day yeah, no shortcuts the repetition is the mother of skill It's 
It's very similar to the hours. And, uh, that's the kind of forms I'm talking about. It's just, that is loose and it's cost him big time. I was just going to say it's 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 the same kind of hours that that Roger puts in the gym with his calf muscles. You know, <laughs> it doesn't come naturally. That's something you got to work towards. I just stare at the weights. To be honest, <laughs> you walk past the gym and it's just like boom. It's like smell me. it. Yeah. I walk by a, a, a coffee shop or a cake shop <laughs> and I just put on three kilos. Uh, oh, you're unlucky. Bad luck. Some of us just you know that we've got it, but. Gee, that was a little bit. That was a disappointing service game from Gale. Lost the first point, uh, and then, and then he actually there was a little bit of panic, and he played a low percentage second serve there, where he went for the middle and try, and instead of just playing a strong ball into the backhand side, engaging the rally and working from there. And once you're up, once you're on under the pump, I love 30 boys. Um, it's free time at the casino for Matteo, and he did a great job there, finally breaking through. Roger, that's one thing with, with Monfis that, that worries me is, is you know the talent he possesses and how beautiful he hits the ball. But he can just go walkabouts just like that. He can be playing some great tennis, working really hard, and then two, three Seems unforced areas in one game, and boom, he's down to break. Depends what the game plan is, but it, you've got to give him his flair, but then there's he's got to, you've got to give him clear instruction about when at certain times of the match I need you to lock in to this formula. Perrottini serving with a break. And, he, and if you give Gale a lot of room to breathe and Do give him a couple of clear things, he can dial into that. And that was the biggest thing for us when we worked together. So a shot there of Berrettini's coach, who's got him dialed in. Vincenzo Santa Padre. Don't you know? Who is, he's got a lovely demeanor about him. He's pretty calm by Italian standards. Yeah, I always see him smiling. Always in a lounge smiling. Nice guy. I mean, is, is that going to be one of the better serve plus ones in the game at the moment? I don't know about that serve, but that forehand just got clocked in at 203. <laughs> was it the serve or the forehand? That because was the that serve. was both huge. <laughs> that forehand winner was at 176 kilometers an hour. Man. Team does exceptionally well. First of all, he's come out here with a legitimate game plan to play heavy offensive tennis when he has the opportunity on that first strike. So sending a message to Gale straight away. And then what he does extremely well is when he gets pushed back, Berrettini, and he has to defend, his ability to come back and hold the court and get court position is um, almost instantaneous, and that's a skill. quickly cements the break. He's playing big boy tennis, isn't he? And so you can see there, that's the point I'm, I'm yeah, trying to make. So happy to take the ball on the rise, and, it, and if you're slightly off pace, wow, does he accelerate it.
Dino. I'd just like to put into perspective again for you, if you weren't with us at the start of this, of how tough Berrettini was to beat at the majors last year and why I think he's going to be a regular contender in second weeks. Those chips on the backhand stayed so low. And look at this one on the forehand. And this just a half volley, the racket head speed. And what's beautiful on that slow motion, his head, look at that, does not even move on contact. is about survival so early in a tennis match isn't it for, for Gail because this is Berrettini's best tennis of the tournament right here so you just got to hang in and keep the scoreboard close oh he'd love that one over yeah remember he was in the round of 16 here in Oz when he had to pull out last year so undefeated theoretically Went to Roland Garros quarterfinals, Djokovic beat him. Then he went to Wimbledon, made the finals there, Djokovic beat him. Game. Went to the US Open, made the quarterfinals there, Djokovic the beat him. You see the theme. Berrettini leads by four games. Berrettini's a break to the good still at 4 3. Good game for Morfis to win. Is a theme that he does not like Djokovic. <laughs> <laughs> not many do. <laughs> not many do. Yeah, as long as it's just the single break, Morfis is still harbor ambitions of getting back into the set. You go down a double break though against Berrettini, it's a completely different proposition. See Gail's new kit. Oh, boys, I know it's a nighttime tennis, you can bring out the dark colors. And uh, our co commentator Roger Rashid is a, a big believer in wearing strong colors. And uh, the likes of the black and red, tiger red. Well, if you're joining us for the first time today, where have you been? It's been a wonderful day at the Australian Open. Wins for Madison Keys and Rafael Nadal going the distance against young Dennis Shapovalov. Ash Barty simply too good in the first of the evening matches against Jessica Pagula of the USA. And it's this one to round us out this evening. Who's was the biggest forehand you yeah. ever played against? I mean, one of the biggest. There were a couple of guys. Gonzalez was one who wasn't as consistent, but yeah. man, when he let it go, it was huge. And 
One was at the very start. He was from Germany. Thank you. Oh, oh, he's not gonna fight. He, he lost in the semi-final of the French years ago. Roger, can you help me out with that? Oh. I'm thinking. Referee's okay. Oh, his name. He just he, he did well for a couple of years or three years, and he kind of disappeared. Mark Jim. Kevin Gorner. No. I don't think he did that well at the French. I'll find out. The line is sublime. This has been. Perfect start for Berrettini. given up any points on serve. Three in total. That's it. Down but not out. Okay. Thumbs up. Guys, we're at 5-3, but man, it's been a quick set. 26 minutes so far. Hitting in love. Roger, is this something that Gail needs to make this match more physical, maybe to extend some points? When he can? Yeah, I think that's the word, when he can, right now. You've got to remember there's you've got to actually have some patience as well so it's not the ideal start but Berrettini is hot so you've got to just stay the course see if you can hold here he serves it out too good and then because at the moment not much has happened he's played one loose service game for sure so if you just take that into its own yeah. Gail's actually gifted that game in my opinion with unforced errors Short down for Ampulsary Khan is Robbie, but it, uh, I wouldn't think there's too many off the Berentini racket at the moment. I mean, he is. It's been water tight, Rog, just three. And given the style and brand of tennis he plays, it's testimony to how good he has been off of the ground. Yeah, 12 winners and only three unforced errors. Man, that's a solid. Said so far. And he's and he is he's hitting it for all it's worth. And that's the that's why I said he's a hot set at the moment, so you've got to just be patient. Berrettini will serve for the opening set. Second week of a major, this is where it's at. Man with uh, a little bit of a pep in his step, and you can understand why. 
He's only made four and four errors in total. That's been offset by 12 winners. And he has been dropping the hammer on serve. Like nothing else. It has been rock solid. Let's see if he can do it in this all-important game to close out the set. And boys, there's a big reason why this set was massive for the Italian. He's played five hours more tennis than Montes. Yes, he's 10 years younger at 25, Gail is 35, but uh, there's a big reason why this is an important set for him. As a coach, I would have thrown everything into the, this basket, this first set. Be up, be ready, be engaging, aggressive. Make sure we make an impact here. So we sit down after the first set in front. And he's done just that. Two points away. Interesting. Only once before has he got to thirty on the Berrettini serve. to get out to that position, but then to hit the shot that he did. Beyond special. Beyond he, special. He has an incredible ability to hit at full range with power. Just like that. What a way to bring up your first break point. Shut that down quickly, eh, Robbie? Fourth ace of the set. I'm sure you know the feeling all too well. Mr. Monfils is requesting to review the call on a right near sideline. to bide it a little bit of time. Let's for service. Advantage, Veratini. Well, that's huge. 216 down the tee. There's nothing that can be done about that. Second ago, he had break point. Now it's set point for Berrettini. Oh, 
blistering forehand. That's the play, isn't it? If you can get to the backhand side enough and then there's this slight, flighted, slight backhand from Berrettini, you can accelerate the ball. I was going to say, Roger, that was not the chip that we normally saw at the start. That one floated. Correct. set of tennis on serve from Matteo and he is deserving of it no doubt in 36 minutes six games to four about as good of a first set as you could have wanted given the circumstances given me that in a second week of a major quarterfinals action mark that was a solid set from Berrettini you look at the numbers 76 percent of first serves you're serving that big averaging I think just over 200 kilometers and serving at 76 percent man that's pretty good five aces 15 winners versus five unforced errors and one for one Break points one. I mean, that's as solid as a start as he would have wanted. Yeah, he's working hard. Hitting a load, you can imagine, from both is off the charts. But Berrettini with that forehand of his, using that upper body to the absolute max. Both guys doing some uh, good high-intensity changes. First serve percentage Time. for the tournament for Berrettini is right around 70. I mean, that's how good that shot has been. What a great relationship Berrettini has with his coach. He tells a story uh, in his humbling days in his mid teens that he was at an Italian tennis training facility going through uh, athletics tests he was the worst Seven at seconds. everything running jumping Bombings, reaction sir. but his coach said to him don't worry i believe in you and i see huge potential and one day you're going to compete on the biggest of stages you're going to blossom Good into a player and i will equip you to last four hours in front of thousands of spectators that's why they have such a good relationship. He trusts everything that Vincenzo says to him. And that's so important, isn't it? Did You've got to have the right people around you, Mark. You have to. I mean, the tour is not an easy place. You're on, it's, it's all year round. You want to surround yourself with people you trust, people that care about you, want the best for you. Oh. A positive influences on you. And you all have the same direction. That's to become a better tennis player and to become a better person. far at the moment so he needs to actually be that person that decides to step up and take the ball a little closer otherwise those rallies aren't in his favor at the end of 
He's in big trouble here, 1540. That's a lot better. Yeah, had to defend the first ball. And then immediately got himself back on top and on top of the court and, and had Berrettini going side to side. And that's the key. Make yourself stand there. This opening game in the second set proved to be. Oh, wow. He took one split step. Look at this, moved inside almost a meter inside the baseline. Highest part of the net. Nothing you can do. Jeez. Similarly with that serve. Given the way that Berrettini's been serving, you go down a set and a break here. It's almost like being down two sets to love. Just check whether Berrettini leans to the forehand side here, Gal does have a tendency to like to swing wide here. Such clever off the ball movement, wasn't it? Advantage office. And that's a big asset. Gale can move from the baseline to the net so quickly and he spreads so wide with that reach. Dangerous visual. You can sense how important this first game is in this second set. that angle is because that forehand is covered with so much spin. It's one Where of the it? biggest on tour. Yep, I was going to just say. Just yeah. testing it, Robbie. Where's yeah. it right? 3,200 revs on the forehand. Good boy. 130 k's an hour. Slice that time, but just Monfils had such and beautiful Montage forward Montage. to get around it and ripped it down the line. Gail's pace is only two kilometers an hour on the forehand behind Berrettini, so he can match him in that department. of this match. Viva la France. Viva la Monf. Yeah, they're 
they're massive moments aren't they in these matches mark i mean because as i said when you sit down at six four what do you tell yourself if you're berrettini much of the same keep that same intensity keep the same movement onto the ball the speed uh, back in keep keep at gale if you go you sit down and you said okay i played one i played a game where i was a bit loose generally outside of that i'm seeing the ball pretty well i'm hitting the ball cleanly off the off the racket yes i can stand up a little bit a little bit tighter but things are okay for me i need to step out hold my serve and stay in the lead at the opening of the second set and that's the big moment and now he can breathe a little keeps ahead of the scoreboard and he'll light up something let's have a look at the win predictor you win the opening set in men's tennis and i tell you what you've got a, a good shot of getting the right result on paper heavy favorite now And again, just having a look at the hard court majors for Mateo. And when he's won the opening set, either here at the US Open, Flipper, he is 19 and 5. So straight away, you know, you become on the odds on favorite. Last guy to beat him was Novak at the US Open. Mateo won the opening set there. Remember, it was the US Open where Djokovic kept losing that opening set in every match that he was playing. <laughs> and in all fairness, most of the losses have come in 2019 and earlier. So last two years Mateo really has put up his hand at the majors Turn, you think you're actually in a good position off this ball. That you, slice. That's Ken Rosal. That's uh, Ken would be happy with that one, wouldn't he? His movement wasn't great when he was a teenager. And just getting back to that initial story I was telling, he said the, the one, one thing he knew he was going to win was, was the height, because he was already taller than all the kids. So when it came to jumping, he had them covered. That was the over, only silver lining to all the activities that they were being tested for. so long and it's interesting their past couldn't be Fourteen. more different as juniors uh, Santa Padre kept him away from playing tournaments when he was 16 his dad was saying you know Vincenzo isn't he ready to go on tour and he said no I've just got this feeling that he needs one more year to develop he didn't have a, a real reason why flip he, he just he just felt he wasn't quite ready whereas Gal of course was a, a child prodigy wasn't he to show how different the paths, pathways to the top can be. When he started playing his best tennis in his 20s. A 
both charged forehand. One game on. And of course, the upside of, of not playing so much, guys, was that when he did start to travel, he was so fired up to get out and travel. There was no burnout. He just couldn't wait to travel and compete. And, you know, a lot of guys, when they're 18, 19 years old, they've already been on the road for four or five years. It can be taxing. Forehand when he's out in defense. That was a testing ball for Gale and a big point for him as well, dropping that first one. Just squaring things up here. for service. It's a more comfortable hold for Gale this time around. He leads 2-1 second set. First set, Berrettini. Melbourne in all her glory and the Australian Open uh, well into the second week now it's quarter-final action Gail Morfis, Matteo Berrettini we're almost an hour into it 54 minutes to be exact and the man in picture has come out all guns blazing take a look at uh, the grip there, Mark. What grip is that? Right off the back, top of your head. Tournament grip. Why? Because it's blue. Very important reason that.
family service. You used to play the tour, Uncle. I did. Great story about the family Love that Dean. started the company. It was actually trying to design chamois to clean cars. And thought, well, this thing absorbs water really well. I'm going to use it on one of my rackets at home and see how it responds. And the wetter it got, the more tackier it became. That's how Tornet Grip was founded by the Nixich family. Can you believe it? No. And then the color is an even better story. This is a bit of a story right here, though. Bobby. I know you're going to continue on with that story, but here's a little moment what Dale's been waiting for. He's kept his nose in front early. And now he's created his real first look in where there's a opening in the door. Doesn't matter how big your forehand is, you've got to be so careful coming in cross court. So careful. that story the different colors but the blue grip stood out so they decided they were going to stick with it and soon people realized it was the only blue grip around and that's how they identified themselves they actually patented that color so no other grip in sport can be that color and torno grip blue is one of a kind says, OK, I'll engage you with that flighted ball. And it was the first time he got one really up high on Berrettini. Berrettini didn't do a good job of generating his own pace there at all. I was going to say, I love that mix-up, Roger. Two break points. Let's for service. It shows me that he's thinking out there. We spent a lot of time on that mark and he just generally used to rally that ball and I was big on if you're going to go back there be aggressive and flighty. Malthus has got to be careful about running around that backhand slice and especially if he goes down the line because that cross got as fast as he is that still puts him under a lot of pressure yeah that was a, I thought that didn't play that at all well should have been very offensive in that rally immediately tried to get himself where he was controlling the way that point was going to end Berrettini needs a first serve <laughs> so naughty. How's Jeez. that sneak? The first serve and volley play. I don't want to say he slowed down the first serve because that still was at 196 kilometers an hour, but definitely a little extra time getting to net. And man, did he close fast. He just snuck up on him like a Prius. <laughs> a Prius. <laughs> Oh, 
You never look at Priest is the same way now, Robbie. Roger, what would you like to see Monfils do if Berrettini were to miss the first serve? Uh, I don't mind if he stands back and engages, but it's got to be big and heavy. Or he commits to standing in and being aggressive. He's, he's got to have some purpose in this point. There's no point waiting for the error. Juice. So debilitating. Ability to produce a serve of geometric perfection. Break point down. Just takes the wind out of your sails. Excuse me. So even on that point there, that was it. That was an outstanding advantage. Stepped in, returned it, got a flight at forehand, but actually was moving back. Gale should have held his ground off the return. And then he would have been in a very productive position. So that was one that got away. First set percentage in that first set, but right now in the second set, he's at 38 percent. Well, let me tell you, the ones he's getting in. All right, time that he really needs him, that's for sure. You're not going to get by Berrettini from that deep in the court. Intelligent shot selection. Vincenzo loves it, why not? No chance of getting this one by Berrettini. But when you watch this backhand, make sure you've got a soft place for your jaw to land. Yep, he knows how good that was. Again. That uh, wide one. Yeah. Roger, is he too far back on the first serve? Because it's opening up that box a lot. Yeah, for me, this is... Gales just decided to go into a bit of a lockdown on the return here, get the ball back. Oh. I agree with you. It's, for me, it's too far back considering of who his opponent is off the first strike. That was a smart off 
forehand. Taking the pace off it, getting that angle to bounce away for his opponent. Juice. And Berrington that time, one step too far away from the back end. And that ball didn't carry to him. No pace on it to, to work with. So that's what he exposes himself to, Gail, if he decides to stand back on that second serve and just hit a genuine, just a standard rally ball. Berrettini doing a great job of diffusing that immediately. beyond special 35 years of age this movement hey flip he was just doing one of our the, the pre-season drills yeah that's brilliant audio I mean, as incredible as that point was just before Berrettini straight back to work. And unfortunately for Monfils, that penultimate point counts for as much as that big first serve. No bonus points in this sport. Brutality of the scoring system. Someone comes and chip and charges, doesn't too often. Straight back at him. Make him ask the question. Man, has he been hitting that slider well? Bouncing up and the court, Montage. sliding away for his opponent with Monfils that far back. It's a tough one to return. It takes all the pace out of it, doesn't he, Mark? This game almost at 15 minutes now. The longer these kind of games go on for, the more meaningful they become normally in the context of a set. the second set and it's almost the same time as it took to play the whole first set which was 10 games I 
right, guys, what do you think? Out wide again. Well, Monfils is standing a little bit closer. He wants to take that one away. You know, I'm dating an Aussie. This game is if Monfils can just get his nose out in front here, get the break, get the momentum working in his favor. That's the return I was talking about, Mark. That heavy flight of ball that actually puts a lot of pressure on you. This is one of the games of the tournament so far, the importance of it. I mean, that has been his go-to serve. You cannot give him that serve. Easy to say from up here, but just one step, to, you know, one and a half steps to the right side. Tease him, give him that middle. Off he's standing very deep again. on the backhand side doesn't generate nowhere near the amount of pace and on the forehand side when you get up there he he, he returns it back with the same type of flight of ball gives you a better opportunity For a second. And Martin. Berrettini. <laughs> I've just seen it on the screen. The water covers 70% uh, of the earth. I think Galmorfis covers the rest, Flip. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a serve volley point here? You'd think about it, wouldn't you? Definitely. Change it up. Rashid was alluding to perhaps one of the Jeez. most important in the tournament thus far. Certainly for Mateo. So what happens now? That I'm not sure how was that 17 or 18 minutes. You're 
you were almost there physically that was demanding on both players gal was probably doing a little bit more running so he needs a full reset right now 20 minutes and 12 seconds gal needs a full reset and just look after this very mm -hmm. first point there cannot be a letdown after that 20 minute game play. For Berrettini, yes, he could Take let a point or two go. Please. He's returning, but for Gale, this Thank is you. a critical first point. Well, the game has taken so long that the, the fans think it should be a change of ends, and I think the security people have just made an unforced error opening the doors. I mean, this was PlayStation Tennis. And I think it's a joystick in Matteo's hand. Oh, he had that, didn't he? You've also got to remember the humidity is still here. So heavy conditions, both men. Take a look at their shorts and their shirts glued to them not the normal dry heat we have here in melbourne That may be costly. That was a loose point. Needed to engage that and to make sure he secured 40 15. Did he punch it or did he punch that volley? Yeah, that was the first one. It's great to see him use his athleticism in an offensive manner. So often we see him defending. That was exquisite. Everything that unfolded in the previous game. Gale is back out in front. 3 2.
Well, these two guys have been shining oh so brightly this evening. It's been an hour and 21 minutes of highly entertaining high octane tennis. And we as tennis fans, as commentators, we are richer for the experience. And we both hope that they will continue to play well at the same time. Take your seats quickly, please. Thank you. Nice contrast of styles to admire. Berrettini with very short, powerful ground strokes. Morphe's a, a lot more languid. Yes, prepared to defend if need be. Berrettini is all about the offense. comfortably because what Gail can do is he manipulates his hands and he can feel the ball so talented around his body when the ball's around him. Shot you'll learn on the clay courts in Europe. Gotta have it. service games he prefers rather than 20 minute plus ones he couldn't have had too many of those throughout the course of his career but certainly not in the last couple of years three games off he to be a good center in rugby or a linebacker I mean, so strong in his upper body and dense in the chest that's where so much of the power comes from Nicely poised here in set number two or three apiece. Right now, seventh game is so important. 
playing some great tennis so far. Yeah. It'd just be a shame for him to lose his brain this year. Very straightforward errors. This has been incredible from Mateo. He's had to fight off so much adversity on his own serve, and he breaks through in the seventh game. He's in a strong position now to set in a break. Well, the ability to concentrate is such an important skill. Well, the, the other thing, Robbie, in the last changeover, watching Gale closely, he was he put a whole lot of water on his face and was taking some pretty deep breaths. So there was there was there, there's probably been a little bit of a flat spot there for him. And Berrettini was good enough to capitalise on those unforced errors. I think it's an area where this guy's improved so much Time. over the last two years. They know the importance of that break for their charge. He's following in some very important footsteps this guy already third on the all-time list for the most grand slam quarterfinal appearances by an italian man the only two guys ahead of him nicola pietrangeli and of course the legend on clay mr panata one of the few guys to beat bjorn borg at rowing garros Adriana could play some serious ball. Oh. This, of course, Mateo's fifth major quarterfinal appearance.
with that over. So important to be able to apply some sort of scoreboard pressure, but this looks like it's going to be a, a comfortable hold, cementing the break for Berrettini. in his pursuit of excellence and wavering in but his concentration. Yeah, I was going to say, as, as impressive as Berrettini is with the power game that he possesses and, and physically, what's more impressive is the mental side. I mean, when you're getting quarterfinals or better for the last four consecutive Grand Slams, I mean, you, you've got to be ticking all the boxes. Yeah, well said, Mark. Well said. Is that with Berrettini getting into those areas, only losing to Novak, it gives you a level of belief that I'm looking after a fair bit of the field here. And so then your expectations are a little different. Your belief system becomes stronger in the majors. Berrettini leads. Berrettini. After the break, we'll return and try and serve for a two set to love lead. <laughs> Off the top of your head, Mark, the last Frenchman to win a major on the men's side. The last Frenchman to win a major on the French side. Men's side. Yannick Noah, the French Open. That's right. Remember the year by any chance for... No. What about you, Rog? The year that Yannick Noah won the French Open. Was I born? I think I was. Yep. Time. Ten seconds. You definitely were, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> What was it, Robbie? Time's up. 1983, boys. <laughs> well, the last uh, Italian man to win a major, 1976, Adriano Panata. He was legendary on the dirt. Berrettini. Not going to follow in his footsteps here in Australia, serving for two sets to love lead. Some ways to go, but he's got some steely determination. He's very comfortable now at the latter stages of the majors. Played in the finals of Wimbledon. Let's not forget that last year. Oh, 
was a, a real bit of sweet day. Just lost the finals, but a few hours later, it was Italy who won the European Football Championships. And he was there. This is impressive. Three set points for Berrettini. Berrettini well on his way to booking a place in the semi-finals of the Australian Open 2022. He's got a two set to love lead now. Well, we wondered how important that fourth game would be in the context of this set. And it's proved to be crucial, hasn't it, guys? Absolutely, I think it was a there, there, there was such a massive physical component to that, and as I said, when Gale ended up sitting down, um, he, he was he looked a little exhausted the way he was actually putting water all over his face, trying to cool himself down. So there was some there was definite feeling there. Mateo's gone off to get changed, and I'm quite surprised they hadn't changed tops more regularly throughout the course of the set. Um, because it's so humid here and just that so much sticking to you, Mark. Quick look at the numbers. What do you make of those? Uh, Barry Tini's first uh, so percentage dropping, but he definitely had more on forced errors, but just the big points. He play, it's about playing the big points better. And the Montfiest, those four double faults just coming at some at the wrong moments. But a set like that is just one point here, one point there, making the difference. So back in, you don't see all that often. so well understands his strengths and weaknesses knows when to go big knows when to be a, a little bit more conservative and that shot selection over the course of each rally over the course of a match is, is of vital importance it all adds up yeah, when you make the right decisions with your shot selection, it helps in the physical battle. You end up hopefully not doing as much running as your opponent. Putting the ball in the right place, the, the work rate. A little harder from Mateo. They're hitting loads from both players. They're giving it a proper whack. Malfis doing some serious high intensity changes. I think it's just left the court to change his kit, so there's plenty for Morphys to ponder. It'll require Herculean effort from here on in if he wants to turn this one around. He has come back from two sets to love down twice in his career.
probably have to look that one up. Can't think of the top of my head. Sebastian Grosjean, top right of your screen, the new Davis Cup coach for France. What a player he was. Is actually Time. both of his come from behind wins have been here at the Australian Open. <laughs> Ready for play. And 2015 against uh, Luca Pui. Bon fils to serve. First round back in 2011. Uh, this is a different kind of opposition. Don't you know? It is. There's no doubt about that because it's just the quality of the player. But so you have no real options at this stage. You must just, you must just stay in the moment, stay for the moment on your serve, one point at a time, and work through it and see what the scoreboard looks like. You don't want to be thinking, oh well, I'm two sets locked down. I've got 14, five, three sets. No, you just need to find this particular moment and get a win here and work your way through that way. So right, Rog, and for me, it, it always goes back to that principle that the only way you can improve your position in a tennis match is one point at a time. And I, I so often think, Flip, about how do you sell that concept to a youngster? It's, you know, you've got a, a good junior, 12 yeah. years of age now, and it's, it's an important principle, isn't it? It's so powerful. You know, when you're young, kind of, you want everything now. You know, yeah. you want now, and just... Like Roger's saying, just get focus on the moment, one point at a time, one shot at a time, and the rest will come. It's so easy to look ahead. I guess just focusing on your serve, first of all. Let's get the service game done. Get ahead. Now, okay, let's try something different. Moving the returns around, or, or my positioning, where I'm standing for the returns, or Try coming to net or being more aggressive or staying back to, to have some more time. Something just to change things around if you need to uh, get something going. Give your opponent a different look. Well, Gail just did there his first uh, returning position up on the baseline. One thing I think for Montpellier he can do because he needs to take away that physicality defending in these service games. See if you can play him a little short if he has the opportunity.
Berrettini is so good at is when he decides to lean in on the ball and press forward, his ability to come quickly and close and then stick a volley. He has a big time purpose on the ball. Second serve return, yeah. stepping in on that one. Nice depth. It's one of, I, I think, one of the most effective returns is right down the middle yep. at the legs, right at the feet. Doesn't have to be the winner, but it's the next reply. So often, this has got to be on that one. A happy camper. Game. Yet to be broken this One evening. That has been the foundation of Berrettini's game, that serve. He's come close, says the Frenchman. Four occasions. Every time we've had a game with Berrettini, he's had a long game or saving some great points. Normally, straight after Monfils has struggled on his own service game. to a big target. 
Didn't guard that one, did he? <laughs> First forehands I've seen him hit that was just out of his comfort zone. He muscled it. Berrettini from the baseline. Yeah. Staying very close to that. Actually got back, but man, did he move well to that. A couple of beautiful chips staying low. Tennis architect in the Michelangelo mold. Berrettini is just building these points when he has to be conservative and he realizes he's under the pump. He's choosing the right shots when he knows he can be a bit more offensively minded. He's doing just that. Decision making has been impeccable this evening. And it's helped give him another break point. how good that was Juice. and that's how good it's got to be to get it by him turn a serve was gorgeous to keep himself in the point he yes, said clip the top of the net but it was always more over than in the net Suggest that the tank's not looking that good right now. He's having a moment, so he's trying to hit his way through it. Those heavy blows that he's delivering, boys. There, they're not the smart ones because there's no, it's not directional. It's just big through the middle somewhere. Uh, you're not going to get much value for money against Berrettini if you do that. The chance to break for Berrettini. Let's pursue.
How about that for a back hit? Jeez. Crushed it. Extens extension through the shot there was magnificent. This is a must hold because it's a, I, I believe it's a slippery slope if this game isn't held. Catch up big time. Oh, just to stay within touching distance of oh, his opponent. You can't go down two sets and a break, given what we're seeing from Berrettini in this match. So good at shutting the gates on a set when he does get that single breaker surf. Yeah, too good. Next point. First of the men's quarterfinals earlier today, it was Rafael Nadal showing us why he is one of the greatest competitors the sport has ever seen. And boy, did he dig deep in that fifth set against Denis Shapovalov of Canada, eventually defeating the young Canadian 6 3 in the fifth. And he didn't look good at the start of it. All the momentum was with the Canadian. Nadal awaiting the winner of this match. And as good as the tennis was from Nadal in the opening two sets, it was similar for Shapovalov in sets three and four. But in that deciding set, Nadal showed us that Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication by just making balls. Served intelligently, nothing spectacular, just well. Oh. Asked a lot of questions of Dennis, who self-destructed a little bit. Way too many unforced errors. Gifted Rafa. A few too many easy groundies. to South Yarra. I mean, it just looks like he's found more RPMs in his ground strokes. Almost like a second wind. Mm. 
he's definitely made a decision to go big, bigger. And with that, as I said, if he just if he decides to hit to a spot real directional, then there's that's when he becomes dangerous. Not just big randomly. Shame after working so hard to get the love 30. A couple of quick unforced errors. Yeah. Couldn't choose a better time to get an unreturned serve. There's only been three of those in this set on his serve so far. Berrettini pulling the trigger too early at the highest part of the net. He's been pretty patient so far, but that time just wanting to end that point too quick. Feel that one coming, Rog? Yeah, 100 percent because Jeez. Gales he's almost on that row three. I he needs to take an offensive mindset in his core positioning on these break points. Gotta shut down op options and opportunities for him. Point has come and gone. Two games on. And every, sorry, Robbie. Every single time we've had that game that's gone deuce and break points, and when Berrettini has won, he's roared like a lion, understanding the importance of holding. It sends a strong message to the other side of it the does. court, doesn't it? It does. That's Christmas for Gale right now in this match. A couple of free points back to back. They don't happen. They haven't happened too often.
Memphis leads by three games to two. Oh, this has been a bruising third set. Only five games, and it's taken half an hour. Tini just loading up on some more electrolyte drinks. Requesting some more rackets to be sent off to the stringer. Just in case, always got to be prepared. James Kiathov on the chair umpire, just on the blower. Same tension as whatever he had before. The French in full verse, encouraging their man to get back into this one. This is going to be a tough climb. But nothing is impossible. into this and ripped it. Let's see the type of point Gale plays here if he gets ball back in play. Let's see if he decides to take control of this situation. In the previous moments, he's played safe. in this department is Morfis yet to break the Berrettini surf. Sick 
can serve at 1540 right in your forehand zone. Went safe. He just guided that, didn't he, Roger? Yep. It's not going to be the way home. First one for the match. Unbelievable. Timing is everything. And you think the crowd around the stadium aren't excited, but they want this to go on. They can, they can feel the energy on the court. Ready for that. Thank you. And a break or serve will infuse you with energy. of momentum that he's got now. Sports and it's any sport, and you get that momentum working in your favor, it feels like you're unstoppable. This is what's happening in this period of play right now for the Frenchman. And just like that, Morphis is 5 2 to the good. That's why you got to keep knocking on the door. You just never know, Rog. You just never know. No, you got to stay alive. And remember, early in this set, you got to remember that he was just—it was a slugfest. And <laughs> we're seeing all the uh, the expressions that come out of this young man. Well, well yeah, he's young, 35. He's young on the tour at these days, but. Remember that early start of the set, boys, where Gar was throwing heavy blow after heavy blow, and that was almost, that was him when he was physically, I think, hurting, and he, he just thought he needed to try and get through these points quickly. Held on. It's amazing what happens if you just stay alive, if you can stay ahead on the scoreboards, and good things can happen. I'm also fascinated to hear from you how you incorporate, I don't know, tennis specific stuff, I guess training. I call it situational suffering so that when your player is hurting when he's doing his physical training, you say, okay, you know, this is four all in the fifth. Thank you. We've still got a couple more games to go. We've got a couple more sprints to do. Think about that situation. Think about this. Thank you. When you get into that stage in a, in a tough match, you're down two sets to love, but you're making your way back. Well, Robbie, this might this might offend some people. There'll be some physios out there or some sports science people that won't like this, but I generally like to train my players in big blocks under fatigue. Fatigue first, get on the court. Second, 
I'll continue after this point. It's missed and put them on the court for a short period of time, a 45 minute an hour period, and work them hard where they need to just survive and get a, get comfortable with your body sending you messages that you don't normally receive in three set matches yeah. day to day. Like it. And when you can own that space, that's when you can play in these big matches under pressure and under fatigue. And it's doing it, it's doing it with calm. It's doing it so you don't press the panic button early and go for stuff. It's like, if you feel it enough and you've been there often enough, it becomes your comfort space. is his speeds on his forehand and backhand in the first set to the third. So in the first set, his forehand was at 121 kilometers an hour. His backhand at 109. Second set, he went up 1K to 122. His backhand's gone up 10K is at 119. The third set, his forehand's at 132 kilometers an hour. And his backhand's at 125 kilometers an hour. Bringing the heat here in the third, hey? Big time. And he'll have to keep bringing it for one more game. Dropping the hammer. Great start when you're trying to serve out a set. intelligence the way he worked that point from start to finish set points for Monfils. We we're discussing about Monfils making this match physical. It's exactly what he's doing right now. Three chances to close out set number three. wins the third 6-3 it's game on Roach they lost four and topping the 150 scale oh man 
It's it's pretty incredible, really, when you think about it. Look, and this is why I believe Gale can play for a long period of time. He's obviously got his natural DNA. He's there's a lot of natural currency there, born with a lot of gifts. There's no doubt about it, athletically and also raw power. But right now, this is the style of tennis that that makes him the makes him the, the difference. You know, he can he can sit and ball, rally the ball, and we can see here. We have a look at the the numbers here. And it was not much, so much about the numbers; it was about the way he was playing, the heaviness of ball, and his core positioning. Great effort. Well, uh, look at some of the numbers from set number three. Both players uh, serving identical first serve percentages, but the crucial one, break points one, finally. There's a number there alongside Morpheus's name. Tenor, isn't it? So fun to watch. And uh, I remember seeing a picture of him when he was, he couldn't have been more than 13 years of age. And he used to play with the thickest of glasses that you could possibly imagine, Mark. They look like Coke bottles. <laughs> and you can't believe it's, it's the same kid. He, he looked like a, a real nerdy kid. He was quite gangly. Coke bottle glasses. One special human being. On three of the four junior majors in his final year, did Morpheus. In stark contrast to Berrettini, who wasn't a standout junior at all. But, uh, the fact that he delayed. taken up the sport seriously has served him well because his hunger and his desire and his passion is fueled by that delaying process. The journey is so different for each and every player. This journey in the men's quarterfinal has been a fun one. Still not at the desired destination just yet. It's set number four now. These men fighting for the right to take on Rafael Nadal in the semis. Don't forget there's another Italian in the quarterfinals. He'll be up tomorrow. Yannick Sinner taking on Stefanos Tsitsipas. <laughs> and then uh, Daniel Medvedev and Felix Auger Alias will duke it out in the bottom section of the draw. So Sina sits a pass, so Jay Aliasim Medvedev. Ten minutes for Berrettini, isn't it really to just respond and actually press back? Crowd momentum is for Gale right now. They want to see the match continue, extend, go deep. <laughs> Berrettini will also feel that Gale's weight of shot has accelerate with those numbers you mentioned Bart so let's see if he applies that same pressure back
just gone up a couple of more KCK. <laughs> that went 164 kilometers an hour. Yeah, that ball, that ball was saying ouch all the way <laughs> off the street. Man. And that had some flight to it as well. That wasn't purely flat. No. A little bit of up and down. It's got to be one of the biggest of the tournament, surely. Let's for service. through this heavy training on the core where he had to just hit heavy after heavy ball and his ability to repeat at big speeds was extraordinary i was blown away by his ability to continually hang in there and throw these big heavy blows and this is what we're witnessing right now this period the fluff of this, doesn't he? 161 kilometers an hour. Well, well, well. Break point for Monfils early on in the fourth. Shock, oh, that would have been a dagger blow. Juice. I feel being broken from 40 love up. He's having to answer some questions, isn't he, at the moment, the Italian? This is great theatre. And Martin, Berrettini. Roger, you'd like this one. Distance behind the baseline for Monfils, the first set, he was one meter, 1.61 meters behind the baseline. The second set is at 1.58. The third set, 0 0.86 meters behind the baseline. That's a sweet spot. Big rescue, big save. That was a massive save, Robin. And just to follow up on those numbers, Mark, when we I did a piece yesterday and I was just I was saying to the team that when I first started with Gale in 2008, the very first thing I did, the very first practice session was put Gale back to my what I thought was his best home base, and that was from a metre forward. And I we educated and tried to teach him that this is his best spot. So because he could see the ball differently, he could be offensive, he could jump on the ball with his athleticism forward, Robbie, as you were saying. And that's creative tennis in his mind. And he's a man with a big imagination. And if you can give him that, that sort of visual, good things, and good things can happen. And that's where the power comes from as well. So this is what we're seeing, as I said, in that third set. Yeah, nice insights from Roger Rashid, of course, was the coach of Gail Murphy's for what was it, four years, Rog? Three years? Uh, three years. Beautiful three years, and, and we're still uh, pretty tight. I don't want to see any signals from down there. I've been coaching all night, Flip. This is crazy. <laughs> 
I'm only taking credit for the third set, though. <laughs> <laughs> got that feeling that none of them now can drop any kind of rhythm or momentum because the other guy's just going to jump all over him. Let's for service. I mean, the quality of this hitting has been beautiful to watch. the use of the court then by both men there the aggressive drives short angles i mean that's what's made it so easy on the eye isn't it the variety yeah. these guys they're not one dimensional players by any stretch of the imagination it's such a great skill set Missed that one. He just seemed to be handling the pace of Berrettini a lot more comfortable right now. Numbers, when you see the numbers of Barry Teeny behind the baseline, because I've got a feeling that he's actually starting to push back with, you, with each set. Average distance behind the baseline actually for Barry Teeny is 0 0.86. The first set, well, that was pretty quick. Let me, I'll let you know all in the row. Fitting <laughs> love. school there even if it's modern day equipment Don't you know. they turned the shoulders beautifully didn't he chip that one firm and low that stayed just went on it beautifully strong in the form very natural shot for berrettini that
Jean. I thought he had wrong foot in for a second, but just putting on the brakes, like a little quick adjustment, and then unleashing that forehand down the line. Berrettini special that almost holding serve there in under a minute to one for set. that have alongside one another blend with each other and they are what makes sport so beautiful today wherever you are in the world welcome to Rod Lever Arena welcome to men's quarterfinals action Morfis and Berrettini Berrettini Thank was you. out of the gate superbly gave the Frenchman very few opportunities in the opening two sets but it's been a great fight back from Le Mans Indeed. opening seven games of the third were magnificent from him Took a 5-2 lead and served it out at 5-3. Yeah. Ever since, he has been unloading off both his forehand and backhand side. And the difference maker for him has been that aggressive mindset, not only in the execution of his shots, but the fact that he's playing a little closer to the baseline. And that's where we are now. The question is, can he maintain it? spent a lot less time on court than what Berrettini has seven and a half hours approximately for Morfis, about 12 and a half for Berrettini remember that match against Carlos Alcaraz in round three seven six in the fifth four hours and ten minutes and he was up two sets to love on that Alcaraz coming back and then winning it in the fifth set tiebreaker what a marathon match that was Brennan Akashima for Berrettini, his, his opening match win. Stefan Kozlov in the second round. Alcaraz in the third, of course, Pablo Carreño Busta is the man he beat in round number four. So that was his path through to this stage. his movement his his first fast movement off the of his central pivot to see whether he's losing any speed to the to the ball because at the moment gail's got him for for pace
he doesn't quite have any answers right now for Gale at the moment. And Gale's depth, boys, his depth of sh shot is definitely increased with the power that he's been del delivering those blows with. He's got a half chance here, Rog. A slight deceleration. Yes, it was. He went safe again. That's a love 30 point. You sort of keep on the same path that is taking you to that spot. Stick with the girl you brought to the dance. <laughs> Thank you. Please respect for the players. Thank you. there at love 30 again just guiding that one roger 100 just mark that down robbie i know you got your little pen handy and mark mark that moment down sitting on the side of the court. Gale's flight path is off the charts right now. Speed and flight is giving him depth. And Veratini looking to his team to say, give me some answers. Even from sure this moment. angle, you can see the heaviness of the ball. Close for the second yeah. serve.
well, well, well. And, and Roch, that's why I get perplexed when I see Gail miss, you know, I saw it in the Kitsmanovic match. There's so many forehands. He, his spin control, when, when he focuses, is so good. You know, we've seen in the last two sets, the flight of this ball is magnificent. So when he misses forehands by, you know, two or three feet, I, I just don't get it. Especially when I see a player like this. Time. How can you not love this guy? What he brings in energy, athleticism, and shot making. It's just something else. Posing the question to Roger Rashid about the fact that Roger, you know, for me, when, when I see him play like this, I don't understand how he can miss forehands. Well, this is this is playing with purpose, and, I'm, and that's what it's all about for Gail. And as I said there before, once he once he's got that aggressive nature, he's on top of the court, and he's he's playing offensive. That's purpose. So then he's really got pinpoint accuracy, and as I said, Roger, that's when it's very hard to to play him. Thank which you. Is, Right now, at this stage, for Berrettini, he's going to have to change things up. Good news for the Frenchman. It's Belle Neuve. New balls. Oh, that Indeed. is ridiculous. Ridiculous. The angle he's got on that. Just Kenny. If you're feeling it, you're feeling it, right? Yep. Doesn't get much better than that. A break. A swift hold. Get the ball to the other side of the net. Put the pressure right back on your opponent's shoulders. Let's for service. And that's how well Gale's seeing the ball at the moment. He's actually stepped in on that first serve. Inside the baseline. Really challenging his opponent mentally.
got to remember also for Berrettini to push Gale back again and take over that commanding position close to the baseline flip and Robbie that's physical you need to physically apply yourself to that task catch up still down a break but that's a nice hold from the Italian 4-3 fourth set Roger I got the numbers for you okay Berrettini first set give them to me mate one no we're gonna make you wait I'm gonna yeah we're gonna make you wait because we want to save it for when the players come out of the break um, fascinating we're lucky enough to have them up here on our monitor. And an indication of how hard Malfis has been working to get up the court. And as a result, it's like a good old tug of war. He's pushing him further back. Time to uh, head over to the concession stand. Get a bit of amber fortification. I see cold, rich in gold. Right. Roger, I've got those numbers for Berrettini. Distance behind the baseline for all the sets. First set, he was 1.21 meters. Second set was 1.75 meters. Third set, 2.11 meters. And so far in the fourth set, it's 2.28 meters. So that's a great effort from Gal there. He's pushed his opponent okay. back, and now we need to see how Berrettini is going to respond. As I said, it takes a physical effort. We know he's played five more hours of Robbie, as you said. And Gale's at a real premium level right now. Not easy to come back at him. And then you throw that kind of decision-making into the mix. That's the perfect formula. Everything is, is just in full flow. in the moment very relaxed knows exactly what he wants to do not rushed making the right decisions let's put some Serving numbers in the set from the Frenchman Marcus. This percentage wise, he's serving at 60%. When they're going in, he's winning 83% of them. On the second serves, he's winning 75. So there's some solid numbers. Yeah, and it translates into losing just four points on serve total in this set. Two on the first, two on the second. It's been a masterclass in that department not only in the pace of serve but the accuracy so we need to stay in this fourth set
answer of a forehand. Getting a little prickly. Frustrations are mounting. What was that about, Robbie? It was about the uh, noise in between mm -hmm. the first and second serve, Mark. It's the first time for a long time, boys, that is a gun no, was on that deep to run the Please do not wide call during and long. first and second service. Thank you. Tell you one thing, that's noisy. He's lucky he's not playing oh, doubles, geez, and he's geez. lucky he's not playing against Kokonakis and Kyrgios. <laughs> 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 if he thinks that was noisy between first and second serves, oh my gosh! Might as well just have a DJ full time <laughs> in their matches. <laughs> tunes would you play Robbie you love your tunes um, 80s obviously Rog is that a trick question <laughs> that's his big voice that's just ripped and there's only one band team, that's that I want to be playing and you know what it is ACDC. Course. Correct. And I just have it on repeat. You shook me all night long. Game point. I thought I just saw the number. Is that right? Over rallies over five shots a one. Yeah, but by Monfis, 83%. Okay. Was that correct? Right now. Yeah, over nine. I'm sorry, over nine. 83% of them are won by Monfis if they go over nine. And then set four. There's another one. Wow. 
access to our arms. And what was brilliant about this, if we see this on the replay, watch the way, there are the points won by Stotts, but watch the way Gale, if we do get to see it, the way he cuts the court here on this back end. He steps in. Just one step is enough to gain third momentum. two sets and some change to get used to the Berrettini serve and forehand but since the start of the third set he has been very comfortable and he's got a chance yet to take us the distance please Pull the rabbit out of the hat there because that is not a shot that you see Berrettini hit often, let alone on a point of this magnitude. He's just gone all in on that backhand. Tuesday has officially become Wednesday now. you like didn't overplay there's the spin control that has been simply stunning from his forehand in the last two sets oh gosh I think there's a lot of people at home thinking I can do that I want to say that that was a little bit of a tired looking backhand volley as well. It's given Morphys a second set point. Oh, that one. That one wasn't. Juice. game because what you don't want to do is drop the third and fourth sets and have Garmon Fees come out and serve at the start of the fifth. That's a that's a no-go zone yes. for him. as it comes another 10 minute game here on the Berrettini surf tell you what Montfils is starting to handle that slider out wide and he's giving it a rip from way back in the court coming back deep 
Set point four. It's a smart serving volley. Juice. Mm. Don't you think he should do that a little bit more often on that ad side? If, if you got your opponent staying that far back, they're going to have to hit one hell of a shot to pass you. but that looks like a tired backhand what does it look like from your angle yeah, absolutely look there's there's a tired body there and you, you gotta remember he's taken a lot of blows in the last couple yeah. of sets there's no nowhere to hide please tennis that Berrettini was playing in the opening two sets I thought it was going to be a, a monumental hill to climb and Morpheus has, has done just that he's done just that the way he's handled the serve of Berrettini the way he's, had, he's made him work so hard in his service games 12 winners, just six unforced errors. It's not easy to do when a guy's throwing that sort of firepower at you. Veratini has. That is the reaction of someone who has been there and done it and knows how it feels. Wife uh, Alina Svitolina sending plenty of encouragement. That one was for you. It's been a, a great start to the season for the Frenchman. He said he came well prepared physically, feeling as good as he's ever felt. This battle is going to be a physical one. It wasn't the fourth, still plenty to come in the fifth. And you can see the work rate that Morfis has been putting out in order to hold the baseline, as Roger Rashid was alluding to. You can see it there, the hitting load. We know Berrettini has been wrecking balling that forehand as much as he can. That's why he's a little heavier than Morfis. But Morfis' efficiency of his ground strokes has been clearly evident in sets three and four and after 313 minutes we are no closer to finding a winner who will take on Rafael Nadal he's probably rubbing his hands thinking yes boys I've been through the ringer today now it's your turn absolutely he would be there's no doubt about that but what a performance from Gale 35 years of age and uh, you know and to be two sets of love down uh, Remember what I said, Robbie and Mark? It's about being in the moment. Stay in the moment. Look after one point at a time and have some patience around you, around that. And Gail's done all of that, and he made the significant shift, as we said, of positioning himself and actually being aggressive and using his physicality forward. When you do that, 
it actually excites you you know what i mean it gives you a buzz to play tennis where you're making things happen if you if you're going side to side physically and defending that way and you're using your athleticism that way well there's nothing that exciting or arousing about it mentally and that's the biggest change we've seen in the match and it's now up to Berrettini to step back out on this in court and try and find a way to push himself back I'm not sure if Gail can get off to an early start where he's whether he's got the physical capabilities because Mark as you said he looked extremely tired towards the end of that fourth yeah Roger just like you said the, in the start of the fourth the first five to ten minutes gonna play a huge point and you're and it's gonna be the same for this set right here come back with something from the change rooms. Well, he's come back twice from two sets to left down. Here's Monfils uh, mentioned. Last time it happened here, 2015. That was uh, Luca Pui. Here he got the better of his fellow countrymen. And back in 2011 in the opening match against Timo de Bucca of Holland. He ran away with the fourth and fifth set, so... The symmetry is there. Dig into the universal energy that Melbourne Park gives him. stage is set the first quarterfinal as far as the men were concerned went the distance with uh, Rafael Nadal winning in four hours and some change or three hours 17 into Please. this one let's see where we finish up one set shootout to take on Rafa Big time. So what's Berrettini saying to himself? Is, or is he saying, can this last? Will there be a dip? Do I just hang around? Benchman to ask him what his thoughts would have been after at the end of that fourth set. Beautiful touch. Murphy's getting back in time, hitting a tweener. Finishing up at the net. 
It's one of the rare occasions when the twinner was the right shot and the only shot. Look from 30 love to break point down. from both players playing it all on the line Might be big. Well, the shot that has been so devastatingly good from our face, the forehand lets him down at a crucial stage at the start of this fifth. I mean, from 30, Love cruising with that beautiful backhand up the line and just two quick unforced errors, and the pressure was on him. But, but it's amazing how quickly it can come, yeah. Mark. And, and that's why we admire players when they go sets upon sets, like Berrettini did in the first two and Monfils did in the second two, where they hardly blink. They, they almost never make a bad decision. I mean, it, it hurts. Any time that happened, it hurts. But just after you're battling from two sets to love down to even the score, and then for the first game in the fifth to do that. Too true. So you've got to remove it, don't you? That 30 love point where you hit that backhand into the net. So if you Gale, you've got to remove that and say, hey, I'm generally on top. That was my mistake. Yes, I might have fed Berrettini a bit of fuel here, but I'm still in a good place. For Berrettini, that was excellent ability to hang and get involved in that first game. I'm going to ask you both a question. So, the reality is in the last two sets, Gals probably played three or four bad points, and they've come all in at the wrong time in the last game. Why can't we just forget about that as a tennis player? Why can't we focus on the other 60, 70, 80 points we've played that have been outstanding? It's a great point. It's actually that in life. We always, the human element is to focus on things that don't work. No. We don't, we don't praise ourselves enough for doing good quality things and that's where the mental shift needs to change I think with people in general is to give yourself some credit and I think it allows you to move forward quicker
Sabatini has to do is just focus on his service games. Is there anything he should be caring about? Thank you. Suggesting here now, Mark, when he's returning, he's playing with house money and you play with almost reckless abandon. Uh, yeah, reserve the tank. Reserve the tank. Yeah, I'm going against that flipper right this minute here at two love. I think lock in. But I see, I hear what you're saying through the set, but I think right now, where the gale is in this position, I'll be locking in on this next few points. Silly shots and, and not care. I just mean step up, be super aggressive. And if he does miss, not stress about it. Problem when you go down a break early and you're not serving first in a set is that. Suddenly, at two love, this becomes you know, a must-hold service game for Mc for Gale. All steps out, it nails 30 love, he plays that backhand up the line. If you had have asked and got the emotional feeling of Berrettini right then, he would have been down and out. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we have a new new man up the other end. Yeah, love 2, 15, 30. Similar tendencies to life, you know. Thank you. We're oh, facing big trouble here. Please, if you don't watch, please leave. penalty from James Kjartavon. This is going to be interesting. Oh, this break. He's refusing to leave right now. Is that what's happening? Yeah, I, yeah, he is. I mean, James didn't say leave. He said, if you don't want to watch, leave. I think they've just taken a, a little too far. First warning. Let's get on with it now. Yeah, let's... Yellow card, right? Yellow card. Yeah, Next let's, time. Let's get this... Much going. Thank you. So after all of that, Monfils down two break points. This for a double break. Tini with the added 
insurance now of two breaks of serves, and surely, surely that's enough to get across the finishing line. It's three love. that forehand it wasn't enough it came back he thought he'd do the same with the backhand that came back but it was third time unlucky I was not expecting a uh, three-love double break within the first 20 minutes of this fifth set. Talk about a swing. Thank you. Three-zip, Berrettini, final set. <laughs> that was a clever serve. Very clever serve. Mm -hmm. Took all the pace out of it. As a first, 181. Just so much more energy on his side of the court now. It's staggering. It's just incredible what momentum does. to produce a shot like this at the end of your range. There's very few who can do it, but he is one of them.
mentioning that the first time they played it went 7-6 in the fifth at the US Open. I'm not so sure we're going to get there tonight. at a major when he's been two sets to love up for a moment there Days ago, right? Yep. Oh. Yeah, that match Mark is referring to is the one against young Carlos Alcaraz. That one did go 7 6 in the fifth after he won the opening two sets. He's oh. on the scoreboard. It's a start. Down a double break as the Frenchman. Yeah, yeah Matteo Berrettini is 23 and 0. Across the majors when he wins sets one and two. He's never suffered the pain of losing when he's been two sets to love up. Aces, identical. These numbers that you'll see are for the entirety of the match. Berrettini has been very good in the double faults department. Just two. First serve percentage for a guy that's at his big as Berrettini. That's actually a little below the tournament average. And that first serve points one again below the tournament average because Morpheus has returned so well in sets three and four. Expect the numbers to be close when you have a match that has been as tight as this one has for the most part. For the most part, no surprises, more backhand winners from the Frenchman. Two more decent service games for a place in the final four. Constructor point. And uh, I think those guys have been ejected now. See you later. Thank you. 
This, this is the same visual on his face and, and the energy out of his body that we saw at the start of the first set. It's amazing when the door gets open just a little bit and you're able to just step through. One of one is that Monfils. Oh, come on. Such a smart chip. That went down the line, dropping it short, bouncing Indeed. just before the service Indeed. game, which makes your opponent move upwards so they can hit it up moving forward and putting it away such a great chip what a smart point from berrettini so impressive from the Italian in all departments given where he was at the start of this fifth set. Yeah. All the momentum was with Monfils. I did not expect it to be this one-sided in the fifth set. And it's amazing because Roger it basically starts with a thought right that's where it all comes from the belief you play one or two good points you're in it and, and then that starts to just to pour through the rest of your body into your game and then you've got energy that you didn't have 10 minutes ago the power of the mind 15 100 percent i mean i didn't you know if i was currently co if i was the coach of down on freezing i would have been so satisfied with where we are at two sets all and after uh, those first two points just looking at my the opposition how quickly it changed and you're right it's just a fraction of belief that was given to him Berrettini, and he comes off his chair, will serve for a place in the semi-finals. But boys, your, your thoughts on this one, if this is, this is indeed the last sit-down. I mean, my goodness, what a match. Berrettini just coming out, being aggressive. We knew this was going to be just a big hitting match. I mean, I... I didn't know we'd have the swings we'd have with Berrettini. Two sets to love, like you said, looking comfortable where he just thought he was just going to roll through this match. Monfils finding something and not only taking it to another level, getting harder and harder and two sets all and all of a sudden, 5-2 double break. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, it's been an absolute pleasure to watch some amazing tennis, but again, I didn't see this fifth set going 
as quickly as it did. What about you, Roger? Time. Well, Italian tennis is on a high. Matteo Berrettini looks like he might just sneak in front of Yannick Sinner to become the first man in history to reach the Aussie Open semis. Sinner will be up tomorrow. Right now, Berrettini needs to serve it out. And lassoed that forehand. Berrettini really has embraced the challenge in this fifth set. He's faced it head on. Got a, a little bit of help from the man on the other side, but he's done some very, very good work. Let's for service. performance here in the fifth. Well, he has beaten down Monfils's door. He's got three match points. Second match point. becomes the first Italian man in history to reach the Australian Open semi-finals. What a contest that was. 3,049 minutes of pulsating tennis. But Berrettini prevails 6-2 in the fifth, showing incredible heart and fight. Was, uh, well, that was an enjoyable fight since the tennis was there for three hours and almost 50 minutes there and what a, what a tussle and a struggle and challenge for both players that was got to give them a standing ovation that and 
especially Berrettini for just surviving that moment early in the fifth set and finding a way through and and to go great tournament great start of the year and he'll be extremely disappointed that he let a massive opportunity go i think Flip. yeah gail would be disappointed but roger you nailed it what an incredible start to the year for him winning the first event in adelaide having a pull over now quarterfinals at the australian open he got to keep his chin up coming back from two sets to love yes this last set got away from him but so many positives to take away and Berrettini man keeps on impressing me every match again now he's into the semi-finals he's looking strong he's looking hungry yeah well face was one of the guys who was most affected when the COVID struck because he was Playing so well, he had one Montpellier, he had one Rotterdam. Remember he had the, the three match points against Djokovic in Dubai. Wasn't able to beat him. And then of course, when lockdown came, he struggled big time. And thereafter, he couldn't win matches for love nor money. But this guy is got so much going for him. He is through to the semi-finals for a third time at a major. Sam Cross with them now. Matteo Berrettini, you're the first ever Italian man to make a semi-final here at the Australian Open. <laughs> that must be something pretty special to you because you come from a country with a really rich tennis history. Yeah, it feels uh, unbelievable, and hopefully tomorrow it's going to be the second one. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm really happy for myself. What a great fight again against Gael. Uh, great match, a lot of emotions. I thought I had, I had him in the third, and then I found myself in the fifth. But uh, I, really <laughs> <laughs> I really fought hard, and uh, I put everything in the court. That's what I said to myself, and that's why I'm really happy. <laughs> I mean, everyone else is happy here. They stuck around to nearly one in the morning to watch you finish that. But what goes through your mind? Up two sets to love, do you start to think about the possibility of a semi-final? Does your mind wander that far ahead? I mean, yeah, of course you think about it, but uh, I was just focused on winning the match, you know. Um, I had a couple of break points and I couldn't make them. And, you know, like I said, uh, tennis is like this. It happened with Alcaraz as well. I was leading and then... And then they start to play better, I guess. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I expected they're both. Oh, God bless you. I, did, I didn't. I didn't hear. I to... No, I mean it, it's it's full of people, and I, I like it. Some of them are not really tennis <laughs> fans, I think, but. But it's, I mean, it is what it is, you know. Uh, you cannot control everybody. Uh, I think uh, to be respectful is something that you, you have to do anyway. But, uh, I mean, it, it's fine. I, I win, I'm happy. And <laughs> so you have two days to recover and you That's beat good. Gail. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> That's good. You beat Gail the US Open in a quarterfinal, and the man you played in the semi final was Rafael Nadal. Now, you have the same situation here. You beat Gail in five sets. You now play Rafa in two days' time. Do you have any thoughts on that match? He had a tough one today as well. That was the, the only time that I played Rafa, and it was a really tough match for me. He won the tournament after. It was my first semi finals. Uh, I didn't really know what to expect. And even though the first set, I had set points. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be a great fight. He, he, he played five sets as well today. So he, he needs to rest as well. And hopefully. <laughs> He's a little older than you are. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> but a little bit more experience yeah. <laughs> in titles. <laughs> Um, you mentioned Yannick Sinner, so you mentioned another Italian man plays tomorrow. He's trying to become the second Italian man to make the semi-finals here at the Australian Open. Will you sit back and watch Yannick play Stefanos tomorrow? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, I'm uh, really good friends with Yannick. I'm friends with Stefanos. I wish them best of luck, but I mean, um, I'm going to watch for sure. Uh, this is a great tournament and one of the best in the world, so there is really 
anything I can do in my room, I, I have to watch it. <laughs> I want to ask you, because you mentioned about a different type of tennis fan here earlier in when we were talking, and there's been, for the people that don't know, a camera crew following a group of players now. There's a new docu-series being filmed that's going to go behind the scenes with a look at both the men's and women's tour. What sort of insight are we going to get? Because obviously we see what you do out here, <laughs> but what are people going to see when this goes to air? What are we going to find out about Matteo Berrettini? Because this is going to be a pretty good first episode, what's going on with you here in Melbourne right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I think people are going to see... Uh, how much I struggle with my body, uh, how much physio I have to do, and how much time I spend with my physio. No, jogging aside, or that my room is pretty, pretty mess. It's a mess, like really, I'm really messy. Uh, you, you guys are gonna see that, but hopefully also good stuff. You know, the relationship with my team and. Uh, you know, everything that is going on, like you said, behind the scenes, I think it's really cool to see it because people, they think that we just step in, but there is like a war behind the scenes. So hopefully you guys are gonna like it. Well, my... <laughs> I'm sure we will. But I'm hoping there's still a little bit more to the story to be written here at Melbourne Park because you are through to the semi-finals, Matteo. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, Matteo. Thank you, guys. That's it. Well, someone who uh, believed in him from a very young age when not many did. His coach, Vincenzo Santopadre, must be so proud of his charge. The mental fortitude that was required in that first set after giving up a two sets to love lead. Malfice was white hot. He was playing some incredible tennis. And I tell you what, at the start of that first set, I thought Malfice was going to do it but great rear guard action. The way he bounced back, a couple of body oh. blows early on in that deciding set. And once he got his nose out in front, as was the case in sets one and two, he was unstoppable. Thank you. What does that one say? So, a look at the numbers. It was four hours and eight minutes in the first quarterfinal today. This one, almost three hours and 50 minutes. One minute shy of that. And Berrettini posting some impressive numbers on serve. Just the two double faults in five sets of tennis. And uh, the winners outstripping the unforced errors. Created a whole host of breakpoint opportunities and wasn't scared to come in. Both guys finishing off nicely at the end. Eyes, Chico, they never lie. Not sure what that means. But I tell you, these guys put everything out there for us today. The work rate was unreal. The hitting loads were large. The intensity changes were numerous as were the sprints and uh, Gail doing the most of them. That was something special. It's been a special day of tennis. Ash Barty winning pretty comfortably, but uh, both Rafael Nadal and Matteo Berrettini taking the scenic route to book their place in the semi-finals of the Australian Open.